They are back, the defending champions from the 2008 Subaru Vancouver International Triathlon. Jasper Blake won the men's division. And remember, he came off the bike in third, but got the win as a result of that 69-14 half marathon split, winning sub four hours and five minutes. In absolutely ideal conditions. On the women's side one year ago, it was Cheryl Murphy. And she is back to defend her 2008 title. Cheryl, of course, from Victoria. And indeed, the ladies yet to overtake within the last few hundred meters to win by five seconds. Rachel Kears out of Vancouver, the host site for this incredible race. Hello everyone, I'm Barry McDonald and the Invasion of Athletes today represents the exciting sport of triathlon as the 2009 Subaru Vancouver International Triathlon gets underway. A strong field with an international flavor will contest in the running, biking and swimming components of the sport. We will also have a special feature on Canada's winter and summer Olympians trying their hand at the sport. But first up, some insights into today's event with our guru of triathlon, Mr. Steve King. Thanks Barry. Here we are with this magnificent backdrop and we are building up to the race that is going to be just like last year, I believe, a battle between the top three men. Last year, Jasper Blake came away with the number one slot. He's back in action again, but he's got two other Jays that will be going for that title as well. Jordan Rapp from the US and Jason Short is out of Australia, five-time Ironman champion. In the women's race, Magali Tessier out of Quebec is a lady who now has got the fastest half iron distance time of 2009. She'll be one to watch. Bree Wee, who's been here twice before, hasn't had the sort of race she would really like. She's going to be formidable. We expect that once again. We also have in the field last year's champion, you may remember Cheryl Murphy, uh, along with Rachel Kears. They had a battle until the last couple of hundred meters and Cheryl Murphy took the victory there. So we're expecting them along with maybe Haley Cooper, a lady who's won one of the races here before. That was Soup last year. So the battle is on here at the Subaru Vancouver International Triathlon. And Steve, there you have one of the favorites arriving in style outside the Cascadia Hotel and Suites in downtown Vancouver. And that person, of course, Magli Tassir, the fastest half high manner in the world this year. Picking up her friend there, that's Haley Cooper from Spokane, Washington. So two of the pre-race favorites Getting on board a Subaru, heading down to the start. Cascadia Hotel and Suites, of course, the official hotel of the 2009 Subaru Vancouver International Triathlon. Race three in the Subaru West Coast Triathlon Series brought to you by Subaru, sponsored by your Western Subaru dealers, and by Cascadia. Cascadia Hotel and Suites, providing all of the comforts of home and more. And by Power Bar, Power Bar the power to push. A terrific international field ready to go at Jericho Beach with $10,000 in prize money providing a little motivation. And of course, downtown Vancouver, Steve providing the backdrop. Indeed, and John Botello won the series race directors right now, letting the athletes know they're just a couple of minutes away. We go over to Lance Watts and the coach at the line. Race morning, there's an excitement and there's a buzz in the air. It starts in transition where the athletes are racking their bikes and it works its way down to this start area where everybody's gathered get ready for the big day they've all been training for. As a coach on race morning, I like to scan the faces of the athletes, the athletes that I know, you can see whether they're in the zone or not. Some will be joking, light, jovial, and that's how they keep loose. Others will be stoic, stern-faced, maybe even grimacing in anticipation of the effort that they're gonna have to put out. Generally with my athletes, I try and encourage them to have a, a refocusing strategy on race morning. I like to remind them to think about just the first 50 or 100 meters of the swim, really hone in their focus and get their race face on. And speaking of getting their game face on, it's time for me to get my game face on too and have a great day. Carpe Diem, seize the day. Ah uh, yes, seize the day and seize the opportunity to take advantage of ideal conditions in the water, Steve. They certainly are. The temperature 
18.7 degrees and they're underway. We've got about 300 athletes taking on this challenge here today. The water temperature is ideal. There is no wind at this point and it's going to be a great course for spectators as well as they head towards that first 300 meter buoy. Yes, Steve, in the first lap on the Aquasphere swim course, ideal conditions, as you mentioned. And the swim records, by the way, both set last year by Jasper Blake at 24.41 and Bree Wee at 25.50. However, that does include the run-up into the transition area. We have to bear that in mind as the athletes are approaching that first buoy. Again, there's three buoys in there, 300 metres apart, but there are two laps on this course. So it's great for us, great for spectators. Back with more from the swim after this break. Welcome back to the 2009 Subaru Vancouver International Triathlon. Barry McDonald along with Steve King. Steve, as the swim component of the event continues in pretty good waters. Pretty good waters. The temperature 18.7 degrees. There's already some major breakaways that are happening. You can see the gaps that have already formed out there. There's in fact a large gap off the front already. There's that man in the blue cap. He's actually doing a relay, but he's a two-time Olympian by the name of Mark Johnson. We can ex expect him to probably be the first man out the water. But remember, it is two laps of 900 meters, a total of 1,800 meters in total. And Barry, you know about that when it comes to Olympic Games. What's the longest distance we got in the pool? Well, it's 1,500. I think that gives us real perspective as to just how daunting and how demanding this is. I'll get you to explain the significance of the hat colors as well, Steve. Well, the hat colors, as we said, the blue is for the relays. You've got the white there for the men, and it's a different color for the women as well, as our leader is about to come out of the water at 900 meters. Again, this is the man who was with our Olympic team in 2000 and 2004. He took a fifth place with our team in the four by 200, but he is also a third place on bronze medalist at world championships yeah, for 200 free. Now, now he's opened up a big gap, but look at that. Brent Paulson looking around. He's worried about the men behind him. You heard, we've heard him say about getting a gap early. He wants to really bridge. You've got Paul Regensburg, the coach for life sport, cheering these guys on because you've got Jordan Rapp, you've got Jasper Blake, last year's top man out of the swim, already back in the swim for a second loop. Also coming around, you can see other top men in there. They do include, I believe, we've got Kelly Guest, Stephen Kilshaw, and Trevor Streppel amongst that group that are coming out. And shortly we'll see the two leading females. Remember, amongst the first two, we do expect Bree Wee. There she is. And Magali Tessier, she is sticking right closer as they go back into the water. See Bree Wee, and now we get to hear her race strategy. This year, my uh, new goal is to definitely top third play. Um, I think if I just kind of keep my head in the game, it should be a good day. It should be a good race. Just swim the way that I know how to swim. And if I ride the way I know how to ride, and if I run the way I know how to run, then I think everything should come together OK. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, staying focused throughout all three events. That's my plan. <laughs> staying focused, obviously, easier said than done, Steve. It is, Barry. The lady from Kailua Kona, our present leader, third last year, DNF the year before. Brent Paulson is our men's leader. Yeah, tomorrow will be a pretty competitive field. Um, Jasper Blake, Justin Park, Jordan Rapper, very good athletes. So I hope to get an early lead out of the swim. Uh, maybe 90 seconds to two minutes, hopefully, um, that I can carry on to the bike. Uh, my job tomorrow on the bike will be to make sure that uh, Jordan Rapp and uh, Jasper Blake don't bridge up and um, Justin Park. Justin Park's a very good runner and so is Jasper, so I hope to be battling out with those guys on the run tomorrow. So uh, my strategy would be to get an early lead on the swim, hold on to the bike, and then run with them on the run So and make it a sprint finish, which would be fun. So our present leader, Brent Paulson of Aurelia, Ontario. It looks as though Jordan Rapp is in second position at this time, and Jasper Blake is off the back slightly. But our leader coming out, the man in the relay, Mark Johnson. 
two-time Olympian, bronze at World Championships, and wearing an Aquasphere wetsuit. He's well ahead of the pack, but here now is our leader, about to exit after 1.8 kilometers. It looks as though the time's going to be about 25 and a half minutes, but don't get official time is including the run-up. They're coming up to other people. They're already lapping other swimmers. There he is, Brent Paulson, the first man to exit. Now his very best ever swim at the half line is a 24.53. He did that in Kansas at a 70.3 distance. So let's see the gap. It is not too much. There's Jordan Rapp, the man from New York. And there's last year's a winner and the man who owns the record for the swim, Jasper Blake, last year, 24.41, the official time for the swim. We'll find out our leader's time. Brent Paulson looks like he's been given at a time of 26.11, four seconds up on Jordan Rapp now, who's going to be the fastest in transition, of course. It looks as though they are very, very speedy right now. Behind him, we've not only got Jasper Blake, we've got Stephen Kilshaw, Kelly Guess is in there, Trevor Streppel, we've got Justin Park, and it won't be long. There is Jordan Rapp side by side. Side, the two men who are going to be first out onto the bike. Again, time can be won or lost. You see the teardrop helmet being worn by Brent Paulson. His first time with us, so he's not too familiar with the course, but he's certainly very familiar with the 70.3 distance. He got a seventh place at the uh, half iron distance last year in Florida. And going out in second, Jordan Rapp, the man who two years ago was fifth at Ironman Canada. Behind him, the man who won Ironman Canada in 2006, Jasper Blake. There is Kelly Guest. Now, we can expect big things of Kelly, of course. He's been on the Commonwealth Games team, along with Olympic gold medalist, of course, Simon Whitfield. And Simon was the man who influenced Mark Johnson, the leader in the relay division, to actually get into the sport of triathlon. Kelly now underway and goes out onto the bike course in fourth place, given a time there of 28-26 exiting transition but into transition it is very close in the women's division Bree Wee and Magali Tassir separated by two seconds as they exited the waters now let's see who's first out onto the course Magali Tassir what a performance this year she knocked 24 minutes off the time she did in Boise Idaho winning this year at this distance Four hours, 12 minutes and 19 seconds. The fastest in the world. And Briwi, she knows she's got her work cut out for a bit of great race. This is the lady who led until the last 100 metres of the run last year. Rachel Kears behind her going out. Looked like that may be Hayley Cooper or Christine Fletcher. But this lady, remember that sprint last year? Phenomenal 78-minute run that took her to the winning time uh, by five seconds. That is Cheryl Murphy. The transition area absolutely buzzing, Steve, as the leader, Jordan Rap takes on the blue competition cycles bike course. Let's take a look at our swim results now. They are complete. First with the women, Bree Wee, your winner by two seconds over Magali Tassir. Christine Fletcher, third, 59 seconds back of Bree Wee. As for the men, Brent Polson, the winner, 26 minutes, 11 seconds, just ahead of Jordan Rap. Jasper Blake finishing in third. Let's go now to Lance. The sport of triathlon has for a long time been leaders in bicycle technology and innovation. Um, in particular, blue competition cycles have really pushed and raised the bar. Uh, blue competition has spent thousands of hours in the wind tunnel creating a bike which is light, quick, and cuts the wind like a knife. Starting with the handlebars, you're able to set up in a low aerodynamic position riding on your forearms and that, that keeps you a low profile to the wind. Note that the shifters are at the end of the bar for easy access. You don't have to move your arms around to move into a different gear. We have narrow brake levers and an aerodynamic carbon fiber flat bar. As we move down the bike, you can also see a wide knife-like fork, which also will cut the wind with a deep rim the deep rim means less spoke surface and less spokes and turbulence in the wind. Moving back through the bike, we've got uh, a deep tubes, wide tubes, and an oval-shaped top tube. This allows it to be stiff yet light with thin tubing. And flowing through the seat tube back to the wheel, you see a very tight cutout for the wheel. And the chain stays and seat stays are also narrow. Last, we've hidden the brakes, the brake calibers, down below the chain stays, and that keeps it out of the wind as opposed to your traditional spot up above the tire. Looking at the front of the bike, the end result or the end goal is to create a very narrow profile. 
starting with the head tube and working all the way back. Last, aerodynamics is in everything. They've spent thousands of dollars and hours trying to f create a bike that is not only fast but light. This bike comes in at about 14 pounds, which is featherweight, and will get you up the hills quickly. So while triathlon may not be all about the technology, the engine, or the legs are important, this will certainly get you to the end of the ride a few minutes faster. One man who can certainly go faster than almost anybody in the sport of triathlon when it comes to biking, Jordan Rapp, presently our leader. He's already overtaken Brent Paulson. This is a man who's done a 2.08 clocking on the bike when he recorded a 4.03 overall time in Florida. And Jasper Bike, very well placed right now. Let's remember he's won every race in this series previously, including Shawnigan Lake, Souk, and of course the recent New Balance Harp in Victoria. And in the women's division, Magli Tessier, she's holding strong. Remember, she started the bike two seconds back of Brewe. There's still only a few seconds between them, but she's a very powerful biker. Now, it'll be interesting to see whether they stay this close into transition. Lots more from the bike when we come back after the break. Magali Tessier of Quebec, second in the swim, feeling very confident on the bike. On the bike, I think I had a very nice bike last time, last race I did. So then that'll be my, my I really have to go hard on the bike and I try to use that strength because um, in the hills, it's pretty good for me. I've, I've always had a good time on hilly courses. And um, I think on the run, I'm also going to have to think that there's a very good runner in the race, Cheryl Murphy, who did very good last year, and she might run very fast. And that's a good thing to motivate me to know that someone's coming up behind me. I, I would like to have a very good run too. I've been waiting for that for a long time to really run strong off the bike. And I think that's the last thing I need to prove to myself that I can do that. And Jasper Blake presently in third position. He rode a 218 in Victoria to take the win. Uh, I had a good race here last year with a, with a good run, so I'd like to do well again. Um, but every race is different and every year is different. So, you know, you show up every year in a different place than you were last year. And, you know, I hope to just kind of put my best effort out and we'll see what, what, what that turns out to be. Back on course now on the UBC Endowment lands, Jordan Rapp well into the 91K bike course and certainly in command of the event as well. Steve King now almost at the end of his rope, in a manner of speaking. Thank you, Barry. Behind me is a beautiful backdrop of the city of Vancouver, the city that will be host to the 2010 Winter Olympic Games coming up in just a few short months. Along with me right now, we have some Summer Olympians, some gold medalists. We also have some would-be Winter Olympians that are hoping to be on our national team. But all of them have something in common, and that is that they're going to be contesting the upcoming Subaru Vancouver International Triathlon. Right now, we have a dispute that's happening between them, and we're going to settle that dispute by having a tug of war match, something that used to be in the Olympic Games, and of course triathlon, fairly new to the Games, just got in in 2000 in Sydney, Australia. Here we go. Olympians, would be Olympians, triathletes, ready, three, two, one. <laughs> nice job, I think Canada should get this back in the Games. Hey, the battle is on it. <laughs> Another six inches, she'll be over the mark. It looks like our Winter Olympians may be taking it. Oh, they're digging in. They are definitely digging in. Who's got the power? Who's got the bars? Who's been eating their power bars before we started? A big heave. Oh, yes, it looks like we have a Mr. Porter in the rear there holding tough for them. Okay, I'm declaring it. We're, we're going to declare that a tie because they put in so much effort. The one minute had elapsed and it means that the battle really begins tomorrow. So we wish you all the very best and good luck to those who are hoping to get on the Olympic team. 
So a lot of fun here for some of these athletes and great battles. Remember, there is a sprint distance going on. 500 meter swim now underway. We've got over 300 individuals and we've got plenty of teams, including, of course, the summer Olympic teams, the women's uh, rocking Olympic rower chicks, as they call themselves, Olympic swimmers and windsurfer, and those would-be Olympians that are hoping to be in Whistler, Vancouver, 2010 at the Olympic Games. One of those Olympic hopefuls, snowboarder Derek Winterman. Well, I want to I want to show them that even though we're a gravity-fed sport and people have certain misconceptions about snowboarders, that uh, we're athletes first and we train hard like any other athlete. And uh, but I'll be honest, I'm really looking forward to the descent on the bike. <laughs> that'll, that'll be where I think I'll excel the most. Um, well, I think uh, it's in the selection of the teammates. Uh, the, um, we, uh, we were a team of rowers and now we're a rower and a pole vaulter. So it's pretty neat to, to meet other, other Olympians from other sports and kind of make a, a multi-sport uh, team. Uh, it was just a friend, uh, a guy from our team was taking pictures, uh, Kevin Light, and he said, I'm gonna be taking pictures at a triathlon, you should maybe come check it out. They're gonna have an Olympian battle and have a bit of a relay. So I thought if we can uh, maybe translate some competitive juices from rowing to something else, and uh, I'm all for it, give it a go. You know, I've, I've been looking for five years for a wetsuit, and I, I'm really thankful to Aqua, Aquasphere for picking up my sponsorship there. And uh, I, I'm, I'm doing the uh, 1.9K uh, solo swim in the half iron relay, and then I'm switching over to the Olympic battle sprint, and I'm doing the bike there. Um, yeah, my husband, uh, my husband and my brother were both in the 2004 Olympics in the men's eight. And then my husband continued on into the 2008 Olympics in Beijing and won a gold medal. Um, kind of a random fact though, my grandfather was also an Olympic rower and my, uh, an uncle and two second cousins, but they were all for New Zealand. So, and I'm the first girl. So Zoe Light, who was ninth in pairs in uh, Beijing, along with Sabrina Kolka. She's not in pairs today, but there are three of them on a team, of course, and we're presently underway in the swim. Already in transition, we're seeing some of the leaders in the men's division. It appears as though Facundo Chernikov is our leader, and there he is coming up. This would be the man I would expect to take the victory in the sprint, but look who's alongside him. It looks as though we've got Kelly Stefanishin, who's going to be handing over to Nikola Gurki on the run, but Mark Johnson, the man we saw lead out the swim in the half iron he's actually doing the sprint relay as well so he's getting prepped to get underway and there is Ben Rutledge now he's a, the gold medalist our men's eight handing over to the man who won gold for our eights in 1992 on the bike that is going to be Derek Porter so it's going to be a fascinating race between these summer Olympians the rower chicks and the would-be winter Olympians as Derek Porter heads out he's actually done an Ironman as well he's a very solid solo triathlete Thank Behind you, them, it's Jessica Sedlock, the biathlete, handing over to Derek Winterman, a man who wants to get on the snowboard team for our Winter Olympic Games. A man who's been to two Olympic Games, there's Mark Johnson. Already done a huge swim of 1.8 kilometers. He's out there now riding 20 kilometers for his team. Mark Johnson, who's heading towards transition, where he'll hand over to Nicola Gurki, the Olympic windsurfer and sailor. She'll be doing the run. But up front in the run, we're going to go now to see our leaders. Don't forget, we've got that men's Olympic gold medalist team out there. As Mark Johnson heads in, he'll be wondering who's going to be doing the battle out there between these guys. It is Jake Wetzel onto the run course at this time. So a great performance on the bike by Derek Porter. It's going to be fascinating to see how fast Jake can go over five kilometers and here he is coming up towards that finish line. Looks as though our men's gold medalists are going to take the team title here as they're just metres away from clocking in. Let's hear from the men's gold medal rowing team who took the title. Uh, we had a great race, I thought. Maybe a little slow off the swim, my fault. But uh, these guys picked her up in the end and I think we uh, really came through pretty well. I was uh, quite impressed this morning with the, with the, with the event, not only with the, the setting and the atmosphere, but just the backdrop. I mean, to, to do an event like this right, right in our backyard is something that's very special and it's a real asset to have, a, to have this, this event right in the heart of Vancouver. Yeah, I had a great time. It was good to get out for a relay. I've done a few triathlons, but never uh, relays, so it's good to get out and see a few of the other Olympians and uh, mix it up with some of the young guys. It's a great day. And finishing second, Stephanie McCann. She's an Olympic pole vaulter, part of the women's rocking Olympic rower chick, Steve. And in third place, also coming in, another female there, hoping to go to a third Olympics in London 2012. That is Nicola Gurki for the Summer Olympians. You know what? It was a good time had by 
Town Hall. It was a really good event. And everybody seemed to have a really good time. Got into the spirit of it. The men's gold medal rowers win it just ahead of those rocking Olympic rower chicks. In third place, the Summer Olympic team. And in fourth, the 2010 Winter Olympic hopeful team. And one man who's hoping to take the overall win in the solo division of the half iron, back on the roads, Jordan Rapp. He has really pulled away from the field here. Very, very impressive riding. We've had him clocked around 40 kilometers an hour on average. He's pulling away from Jasper Blake at this time. And Jasper should be a worried man as well because Stephen Kilshaw, the man who is his protege, in effect, is also riding up a storm. Stephen came out the swim in seventh place, a minute 13 back on Jasper. In third position in the women's race, that is Christine Fletcher. Third is actually a position that she has held at Ironman. She did that in 2005. She's had some injuries lately, so I'm pleased to see her doing so very well at this point. As we also look at the lady who is still in second place, Bree Wee, back from Kyle Kona, former Florida surfer, and she is happy right now with where she's placed. She knows she's got a real battle on her hands to try and hold off Magley to see who's pulling away on the bike. And there she is, our present leader, the lady who got to the sport when she was about 17 years of age. She former violinist, snowboarder, skier, and really loves her triathlon, as does Rachel Kears. Seventh out of the water, finds herself in a top five position right now. They have to think about nutrition. Let's find out more from Lance Watson. Race day is here and the training is done. The remaining deal breaker in the half Ironman distance triathlon is how you handle your nutrition and hydration. That can be the difference between executing your fitness to perfection or having to walk it in on the run. Unbelievably, an athlete will sweat five to six liters of fluid on race day. Now, if you compare that to a container of milk, that's six containers in the refrigerator. It's a, it's a lot of fluid. So athletes have to be systematic about trying to drink at least a liter of fluid per hour. Also, what you're losing in sweat is sodium and you're burning calories to keep the muscles moving. What our friends at Power Bar have done have really innovated this uh, great product of Power Gel, which gives you calories, sodium, and even some caffeine for a little bit of a kick. 100 calories per, 200 milligrams of sodium, which replenishes what you sweat out, and also helps you absorb the fluids that you drink through your stomach. Athletes will have between five and 10 of these over the course of a half Ironman distance race. So back to our leader, Magli Tassir, who we understand has now poured a couple of minutes away from second placer. You see Justin Park's name on there. He's doing very well on the bike course as well. We'll get to see him shortly as our leader goes past. Slight uphill, left-hand turn. She'll be able to see where her competition is. There is the competition right now, Bree Wee. The finish of the bike after this. He is a defending champion of the Subaru Vancouver Triathlon, Steve, but Jasper Blake has some work to do if he is going to successfully defend that title. But just like last year, he came off the bike in third position behind Chris Brown and Andre Yastrobov, but he ended up coming through the field on the run. A brilliant runner, but look at this man. I am impressed. Jordan Rapp from the US, the man from New York. His fiance, Jill Savage, is watching the race today, of course, and she too is an Olympian. And this lady, I'm sure, is going to be one of the best in the world at all distances. Right now, the current leader and second place, a Wee, Athlete of the Year for USA Triathlon. Last Last year, she recorded a 2.45 split for the bike portion of the event, ended up with a four hour, 40 minute clocking. She needs to go faster today if she's going to be close to Magli to see her. But the battle is still on in the women's race. In the men's race, he's opened up a huge gap. Jordan Rapp about to dismount into the second transition. That is one of the sprint triathletes alongside him. This man has opened up a huge gap. I believe he's averaging about 41 kilometers an hour. We've got his split there, two hours, 13 minutes, 
minutes and three seconds. It is not a record split, but a slightly different bike course today. Now running possibly the worst of the three disciplines for him, although he has run just over 80 minutes for the half marathon distance in a half Ironman before. But he needs to go faster than that if he's to hold on with the likes of the men that are going to be behind him. We see how quickly he makes a transition and gets out onto the run course. It looks as though he's going to go out there with about two hours, 42 minutes approximately on the clock. So just over a minute and five seconds in transition as he hits that half marathon run course. Jordan Park, what a bike split from him too. This is the man from the US Chapel in North Carolina. Has actually a heart problem. Look what's happening right behind him. We've got Jasper Blake in there. We've got Stephen Kilshaw. He has made up a lot of ground after coming out of the swim in seventh place. And the other man in there as well, looks as though that may be Kelly Guest. Uh, no, it isn't, it's Brent Paulson. Remember, Brent was the man who led out of the swim. It looks as though he's the man who's going out with these guys on the run. They're all very, very close close together and Kelly Guess will be right up there amongst the leaders. Stephen Kilshaw lost a little time in transition but watch for him. He and Jasper did go sub four hours on the course in Victoria and Jordan now looking to get some splits. He wants to know what's happening behind him. What sort of a gap has he got because he knows with someone like Jasper in the field he probably needs somewhere in the region I'd say of six to seven minutes because of Jasper's last year's time. Absolutely phenomenal. Now you've got Jordan Park. Remember he has a heart condition and uh, he's been able to run. He used to do a 4.16 mile back in high school, but Stephen Kilshaw was a former high school wrestling champ on Vancouver Island. Jasper Blake sitting comfortably right now. And look, we get to the women's transition, T2. That's what they call it as they come off the bike. We're going to get a split from Magli to see her. Now, she has opened up quite a few minutes here, I believe. I think she's going to do a split around two hours 25 by the time she dismounts. That will average for her about 37 and a half kilometers an hour as she goes over one of those timing mats. We get to see the splits now between her and second place as she gets ready to rack the bike. And this is a tremendous effort so far. A reminder that when she won that race in Boise, Idaho, she was ahead of the champion for this course, Lindsay Corbin, who set the record uh, two years ago for 2029 is the course record. Not only did she beat Lindsay Corbin there in Boise, but she beat What's Samantha McGlone, a Canadian Olympian and the former world champion at the 70.3 distance. Now, Magley looks like she's forgotten something, losing some valuable seconds here. She can't really afford to do that at this point, but she needs nutrition. There will be plenty of aid stations out there. It is a hot day and things are hotting up, not only in the race, but for spectators as well. As Bree Wee comes into the transition area and a very fine ride from her, looks like a 2.30 split. So at this time, as they will be going out, they're both going to be inside three hours, but it looks as though almost a five minute differential between first and second places, Barry. The legs, uh, what are they like after the cycle and to the run? Does it take you a while to get comfortable? As fit as these athletes are, is it still a tough transition, so to speak? It's a very tough transition, but it looks as though we've got a third placer in there. I'm not sure if that is Christine Fletcher or whether someone like Haley Cooper. They're talking about Haley Cooper. There she is coming into rack of bike. I couldn't identify who the other athlete was there. It could have been one of the men, but a great performance. Free week, getting a high five. Paul Regensberger, coach, also happy to see her out on the run course. As we're now, we see Haley Cooper. A reminder, Haley won in Suka last year at a great race there. She got fifth in her age group in Ironman Hawaii a couple of years ago. And Christine Fletcher is a few seconds back of her in transition. Haley Cooper goes out third. Christine Fletcher, there she is. A lady who won the inaugural uh, Desert Half in Asoyas. That was up in 2005. So she looks to be in good form right now, despite suffering from some injuries recently. She's got 16 Ironman finishes to her credit as well, Barry. No, third. Haley Cooper, Steve, out very well in the run, taking advantage of Christine Fletcher's woes in the transition area. What happened to her here? Well, Christine came into transition in third place off the bike ahead of Haley Cooper, but after she donned her race number on and her cap, etc., and uh, she went the wrong way on the run course, and officials had to tell her which way to go, so she lost some valuable time. Obviously costly. Magali Tassir is the leader, 2.56.02 after the bike. Bree Wee, more than four minutes behind. Then Haley Cooper in third. To the med now, Jordan Rapp at 2.42.03 with a seven minute lead on both Jasper Blake and Justin Park who are tied as are Stephen Kilshaw and Brent Polson for fourth. 
So one of the turns on the out and back run course, we have Jasper Blake has already made a surge. He's in second and is a great partner there. Stephen Kilshaw makes a turn behind him. So Stephen was the winner of Shawnigan Lake this year. And this man, Jordan Rapp, won Shawnigan Lake last year and he's presently well in the lead and running very, very strongly. I know his best at a half iron on the course is 80.01, but look at this, these three men, Stephen Kilshaw leading the man who hopes to be a giant killer today with Jasper Blake behind him and Justin Park in fourth position. And you can look just behind them is Brent Paulson, the man who led them all out of the swim. A little tougher terrain up ahead on the New Balance run course and a perspective provided by a runner. And the shade certainly offering a welcome respite from the hot summer sun. More now with Lance on the latest on footwear for these triathletes. A lot of thought goes into shoe selection for the triathlon. It's not just a matter of picking the best looking shoe off the rack. Looking at this New Balance 805, first what you're going to see is a very low profile sole. Typically, if you're out for a training run, you might want something with more cushioning, but for racing, you want a, a firmer sole, which is going to return all the impact that you put into the ground. Basically, you're not going to lose any energy through excess cushioning. Of course, grip and traction is important, and you're going to pick your sole according to the terrain that you're going to run on. This has got some traction for the trails here, which is useful. Um, if you're running on the road, you would use a nice flat bottom shoe. Okay. Moving around the shoe, one thing that triathletes will do to speed up their transition is rather than a laced shoe like this, they'll actually place elastic laces in the, in the uh, shoe holes to allow them to quickly slip the shoe on um, without having to do up shoes. It's actually hard to function your hands after riding the bike. Another little trick is they'll actually duct tape or glue the insoles right into the shoe so it doesn't curl up when they plow their foot into their shoe quickly through transition. If they're running without a sock, which is quite common in triathlon, again, a, a time-saving trick in transition, they'll want to put some Vaseline right inside the shoe. They'll look for any seams or rough spots in the shoe and they'll lubricate it so that they won't rub up a blister while they're out there running like the wind. So while you may want to choose a shoe that suits your style, and, and this one certainly has some with the gold trim, um, think about function and what you're trying to get out of the shoe as well. The shoe can make the difference to a, a, a safe and fun run versus a bit of a slog out there. Back with the exciting conclusion of the Subaru Vancouver International Triathlon next. The team and training volunteers making life a whole lot easier for all the competitors in the triathlon, including the leader, Jordan Rapp. And it appears the battle is on between two good friends for second and third place. Stephen Kilshaw, seventh out of the swim, now finds himself moving away. And in fourth place, Justin Park, the man who in fact raced in your ninth place. There's the lady who we're expecting to win. Now in order, I had it estimated that she has to run 84 minutes for the half marathon to set a new course record. Bree Wee is hoping to settle for that second place. Remember, she flatted the first year 2007, last year came away with third place finds herself presently in second place a super race for her Haley Cooper the lady who got a minute up on Christine Fletcher after the transition there the winner of Souk last year a lady who has on four occasions been in the top 10 at the Ironman distance including a sixth at Ironman Arizona and a second place at Ironman Court Lane in 2007 and look at this Magley to see her actually moving further and further away the sort of pace she's on right now I believe we are going to see a course record high fives Mark Shorter he is the race director for this event. Haley Cooper knows that she's not too far ahead at this point of that lady. That lady, of course, being Christine Fletcher, the lady who won Napa Valley in 2008, 
In fact, she won the New Balance Victoria race in 2004 as well. She's on good form, a man who's on flying form. He had to do, I estimated, about 79 minutes to set a new course record for the men overall. That record, Andre Yastrobov's 40101. Stephen Kilshaw, what a race he is having so far. The winner of the Souk Sprint, second last year in the Peach Classic to Jeff Simons. And it looks like he could be taking his mentor, Jasper Blake. Jasper, the man everyone likes to see race four times in the top five at Ironman distance. And Steve, North Carolina's Justin Park there in fourth place. Time now to meet Angela James, representing the team in training. TNT is team in training. We support the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and we take people from all different levels, and we train them to run marathons and do triathlons. And we travel to exotic locations all over North America and outside North America. Um, the people have an amazing experience. It's we, you get to know people from all walks of life and usually become really lifelong friends. And it's all in aid of one great cause. It's to support all the blood cancers. The, the team stands for train, endure, achieve and matter. And that's what we're all about. So here at the finish line, look who's coming down the home stretch. The man who has led on the bike and he's coming up to a victory. It's going to be a huge run. Looks like about 71 minutes for the run. He's got a 3.53 on the clock right now. It is easily a new course record for the 2009 winner. It's going to be a Jordan Rapp from the US personally training racing out of Penticton. The man who got third at Ironman Arizona stops his uh, partner, Jill Savage, Canadian Olympian is there. A new course record, 3.53.17 for our champion, Jordan Rapp. Thank you. Thanks, Lance. Thanks, Life Sport. Thanks, City of Vancouver. Thanks, everybody else. What a great race. What a great day. What's up? A magnificent day for Jordan and a brilliant day also for Stephen Kilshaw of Victoria, the man who won in Shawnigan Lake by 19 minutes and he was second to Jasper Blake in Victoria going sub four hours. He's going to do that again today in taking second place as he hits the line, 3.59.47 unofficially. What a run split there, 70 minutes and about 30 seconds I believe for Steve Kilshaw and the man he bested, the man who won this title last year, the man who's won every one of the four races is in the Subaru West Coast Series, the man who won Ironman Canada in 2006. It is Jasper Blake coming up for third place today. He's going to finish off with another great time there, 4.02.04. Jasper finishing more than nine minutes back, however, of the winner. There's Subaru's Dave Park there to greet him and a couple of members of Jasper's family. Good race today. Well, it was a li little rough today. Uh, didn't feel awesome, but, uh, you know, that's what happens when you got get a guy like Jordan who, who really pushes the pace on the bike. You know, everybody has to respond, and uh, you probably go a little, a little deeper than you should, but, you know, that's... Uh, the nature of it, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I hung in there. Some days you're battling for first, and other days you're battling for third, and uh, today I was uh, just trying to do my best to get to the finish line, so. Here we go to Justin Park, about to take fourth place. Remember, he was ninth in New Orleans in their 70.3, won by Canadian Olympian Brent McMahon, who set a course record there, ahead of two men who have won the World Ironman Championships, Chris McCormick and Luke Van Leerden. And Justin coming in there will be very happy about this, and he's got a clocking, looks like a 4.03.13. So there he is, the former college soccer player, gave up his legal career to become a professional triathlete. Fourth place here in Vancouver and taking fifth place, a great race from Kelly Guest, who in fact was three minutes back of those four men who left the transition area onto the run. So a tremendous race. He was third in the New Balance half in Victoria this year, did a 4.04 there. So Guest with a very respectable fifth place finish, his time 4.07.47. The winner, Jordan Rapp, 3.53.17, more than six minutes ahead of Canadian Stephen Kilshaw. Jasper Blake was third, Justin Park fourth with a time of 4.03.15.
And now look at this. It is going to be seventh place overall for Magli Tessier, the lady from San Severo, Quebec. She is on to a record pace here. It's going to be about four hours, maybe 14 minutes. That means she will have done a 78-minute split for the run. Tremendous job. The lady who's the fastest in the world, and she's going to set a new course record. It was Lindsay Corbin's 420-29 before today. The lady who won the World Age Group Duathlon Championships 2005, now the winner here. And her winning time and record time of 4.14.34. What a magnificent day. What a performance for our winner. And a terrific day for the title sponsor. I love being uh, present when you have so many winners come across the uh, winning line. I mean, what's exciting about it is everyone is a winner. They all start out from, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, semi-professional so weekend runners and then uh, eventually reach half Ironman uh, status or Ironman status. So it's a continued improvement on yourself, which is wonderful to see. Amazing. The course is amazing. Running along the water like that. The race organization was perfect. There were gels at every station. Traffic was perfect on the course. I have nothing to say. It was just an amazing experience. So thanks to everyone. <laughs> And coming into second place, collecting a high five there, Brie Wee. It's going to be a magnificent second for her. It looks as though she's going to be something like 17 minutes up on her third place time of last year. The lady on three occasions has had top 10 Ironman finishes, including second at Ironman Japan, fourth at Ironman Florida, fastest all-time amateur record in Hawaii at 9.47. Coming in to take the second in the women's division, it looks as though it's a 4.23.12 for second places, Brie we out of Kailua Kona. Great second place today. Uh, you had a wonderful race. You were smiling the whole way out there. So, did you enjoy yourself out there? Oh, for sure. It was an awesome race. A great course, great volunteers, and super competition. So, the we weather's more like home here. No, this weather is like ideal. This is so fun to run in. It's not quite the sauna I'm used to. So you, you were ca trying to catch all day, but uh, you never quite got close enough to really put uh, a heavy-duty assault on the leader today. Oh, um, I hate to admit this, but I was actually racing for second. I knew there was no way I was going to catch her. She's a fabulous athlete and a great friend and one of my teammates, and I know how hard she works. So um, as soon as she took off on the bike, I kind of knew the day belonged to her, and I was racing for second, and so that's what I was doing. And a lady who made up ground on the run, Christine Fletcher out of Vancouver. She is indeed going to finish third. That's the position she came out of the transition, but lost time there to Haley Cooper. The lady who's done 16 Ironmen. Remember, she had a third at Ironman Canada 2005. Last year, somewhat injured, she finished 11th, but it's a third place today of 4.30.32 for Christine Fletcher. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't think I had another step in me. Uh, you still have Thank so in the men's race, we had two Americans and two Canadians in the top four. The same thing is going to happen here in the women's race. As Haley Cooper out of Spokane, Washington, into the home stretch now, about to take that fourth place. She won Souk last year, did 4.36 there. You can see her time here today, officially 4.33.02. Fourth of Ironman Court Lane just a few weeks ago where she did 9.51.11. Delighted to see her back in action at one of these Subaru Series races. And taking fifth place, last year's winner, Cheryl Murphy, who's going to go on to Berlin to represent us in the World Marathon Championships. Checks her watch. She clocks in there at, I believe, a 4.38.58. And don't forget, two years ago, in suit, she was the original winner of the women's race there, finishing second behind Jasper Blake. Finishing behind her today, last year's second placer, Rachel Kears of Vancouver. The PE teacher clocking a 4.40. All right, there's your final results. Magali Tassir, your winner by a, a considerable margin and setting a new course record by more than five minutes. Bree Wee finishes second, Christine Fletcher third, Haley Cooper fourth, defending champ Cheryl Murphy in fifth. We'll be back to wrap up this year's triathlon after this break.
An absolutely brilliant Vancouver day for the Subaru Vancouver International Triathlon. Congratulations to our winners. Magalie Tessier of Quebec wins the women's division. Jordan Rapp of New York takes care of the men's in the Subaru West Coast Triathlon Series. Brought to you, of course, by Subaru. Sponsored by your Western Subaru dealers. And by Life Sport Coaching. Triathlon training for all abilities anywhere in Canada. And by Power Bar. Power Bar. Power to push. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage. And on behalf of my colleague Steve King, I'm Barry McDonald. Hoping to see you next year.